we had several nice surprises that I'll share with you. Over the last year or so, we've done over 10,300 cases at this point. We've discovered that we don't need nipple markers or mole markers anymore because it's very obvious what the nipple is and what moles are on the skin, and I'll show you some cases of that. That has saved us a bunch of money in our department. Vascular calcifications, which can be another pain in the neck, uh, are now easily defined, and you can see the course of the vessel and clearly see the train, train track appearance of those calcifications, so workup is not necessary. Lymph nodes are seen everywhere, and they have a nice fatty hilus, and again, very easy to determine that's a lymph node. And one of the things we really didn't expect was that sometimes the density that had been called stable for years actually is shown on TOMO to have suspicious margins. So this case is actually quite interesting. She came in just a few days ago, actually, for needle wire localization. She had an outside mammogram, which showed a mass on the CC view only. They couldn't find it with ultrasound, so they sent her for needle wire localization and surgical excision. Well, I knew that I couldn't localize if I didn't know if it was in the upper or the lower aspect of the breast, so we decided to do a TOMO through that uh, breast CC view only. And here, clearly see the mass. And using our scroll bar, we clearly see that this is within a millimeter of the skin at the foot of the breast. So for the CC view, the scroll bar will go from the foot to the head. On the MLO view, it goes from lateral to medial. So using that, each tick mark is one millimeter. So I knew it was within two millimeters of the skin, very clearly marginated. You can actually see the pores in the skin on this slice. So I went in and I looked at the inferior aspect of her breast, and we could actually see a small sebaceous cyst, which correlated very well. So she actually, we just marked the skin, and they took out that sebaceous cyst because she was kind of freaked out about not doing anything at this point. But had she had tomosynthesis, the first screening exam, she never even would have had a workup. Lymph nodes. Uh, this is just a good case to show what lymph nodes would look like. So here she had what was thought to be indeterminate nodule in the posterior lateral aspect of the breast. And on tomosynthesis, I think you clearly can see the nice fatty hilus and the cortex of this lymph node, so no further workup is needed. And that's really what they look like almost all the time. Vascular calcifications, this is a very obvious case, of course. But I just wanted to demonstrate how clearly you can see that it tracks along the vessel and that there are parallel lines of calcifications. It's really beautifully delineated. This was a 51-year-old who came in for routine screening, CC. And I'll just point out this density here on the right, MLO views. Again, this density is in the upper aspect of the right breast. What I really want to show you here is that 2006, 2010, 2011, this had been called a stable density without uh, workup done. Yet on tomosynthesis, I think it's very obvious that this is just, in fact, a very spiculated mass. Also on the MLO view, very spiculated irregular mass. So we did an ultrasound, which of course showed this irregular mass, and that was biopsied and was infiltrating ductal carcinoma. A uh, similar case, here's a lady came in for routine screening. I'm going to point out to you on her CC view this nodular area in the lateral aspect of the left breast and in the upper aspect of her left breast. We really didn't see anything else. Again, here's 2010 and 2007. This had been called a stable mass and had not been worked up. Yet on tomosynthesis, you can see very small spiculated margins to this mass, a little bit better on the MLO view, very irregular. We did find it on ultrasound, and this was also invasive ductal carcinoma. We had some unexpected outcomes, and these are some of the strengths, I think, of tomosynthesis, which we did not intend to happen, really. Uh, what we found is that masses are actually better seen on the one millimeter tomo slice than we can ever obtain from a spot compression view. So we decided very early on not to do spot compression views for callback. If we see a mass, we go straight to ultrasound. Um, as a result, we're calling back fewer patients for masses, and we are calling back fewer patients for superimposed normal tissues. So our mammographic callback has decreased by 40%. 
um, which equates to a decreased population radiation dose, of course, our ultrasound callback has actually not changed. And while you'd think it might because you're not calling back areas of superimposed normal tissues, we are finding more things like radial scars and very small cancers, as I've already shown, that weren't detected otherwise and calling those back for ultrasound. Um, we're more able to accurately localize something when we search with ultrasound or for spot magnification compression views using the scroll bar tool. We know very accurately where to look and it minimizes our time searching. Um, and we also see adjacent masses that we didn't expect. 